Okay, let's go back to the meeting, which has ended, but um, I wanted to just play this one part and then talk a little bit about global news or the news coverage in Canada. So let's listen to what this lady has to say. We have had enough. This situation must come to an end. Our residents, workers, and businesses are suffering. Our small businesses and community organizations have shown incredible resilience throughout this pandemic. Our essential services have stood strong through lockdowns and safety measures and have helped us keep residents safe. We are here to let you know we stand with you and we will continue to have your back. In the past days, I have had numerous conversations with Mayor Watson. I have also spoken at length with city councillors, representatives of local BIAs, business and community leaders. I have been engaged with concerned businesses, residents and organizations through countless phone calls, emails and text messages. They have shared firsthand with me the disruptions to their livelihood and well-being. Our residents deserve to feel safe in their own communities. Right now, and for the past 10 days, the rights and freedoms of my community have been restricted, and this must come to an end. So it really does seem like the way at least the government officials are discussing this is that it's the city of Ottawa versus the protesters. Is that a real dichotomy that you saw or were there a lot of people though in Ottawa that actually support what they're doing I'm just curious it just seems like that they're drawing that line like yeah everybody yeah. here feels unsafe everybody here feels like this is really annoying everybody here wants you guys to get out and we want life to go back to normal yeah no I think that that's a lie I have some friends who live in Ottawa who are very happy that this was happening because they've said that Ottawa has just become a really decrepit city. It's really run by uh, bureaucrats and by uh, unelected officials, you know, by elected officials and, and people who are kind of in a protected laptop class who, who haven't gone to work really in two years, who haven't lost very much and who have even gotten raises and have gotten um, certain credits to buy furniture and, and computer swivel chairs and all kinds of things. So they've had a lot um, to gain. And so now like you can understand that they have this kind of interruption bursting their bubble where suddenly it's like, oh my goodness, you know, we have to deal with maybe 1% of the discomfort of people uh, who have dealt with the, the, the worst kinds of situations for two years who haven't been able to pay their mortgages who haven't been able to put food on their tables, um, who have been forced to put something into their body that they don't want to do to keep their livelihood, who have had their children suffer. Like we have a suicide epidemic of children in Canada. So it's funny, it's not really an issue of Ottawa's citizens versus the truckers. That's what they're really trying to make it. Um, it's an issue against real people who have suffered and who can no longer live this way, quite literally, can no longer do it. And then you have people who are who are irked by the idea that maybe the the premises that they believed were wrong. And, and they're faced, I think, with the with a mirror of their own discomfort of we've we've put people through so much suffering you know, and we've stayed here sheltered. And now the first exposure that we get to a little bit of discomfort, we are, are going completely ballistic. Now, um, I was also in Ottawa. I can tell you a little anecdote here that would maybe answer your question um, too. So when I got to the hotel to check in, the lady there who was working behind the reception, there were a few people, the hotel was busy. There were people all over the hotel was booked. And she, uh, of course, has to wear her mask. There's still the mandates there. She came out from behind her, her little cubicle and greeted us and our child and was so happy. And then when we checked out, she said, how was your weekend? How was your stay? This has been the greatest weekend of my life. Like, I'm so happy that you guys are here. And she lives in Ottawa. She works in Ottawa. She works at a hotel in the hospitality industry. You know, obviously, they've seen a massive hit as well. It was like... Thank God that people are actually here fighting for what they believe in. This is really the Canadian way. Like you could, 
you could see that people are regaining faith in their fellow citizens and their neighbors and their friends, people who are showing up, um, our children, our families, they have bouncy castles there. They have kids. They have people literally singing, we are the world, Michael Jackson, <laughs> you know, in the square. And the percentage of people that may actually be looking to cause mischief would be the same as, let's say, after you have an NHL hockey game and you have large crowds of people go out into the street. You have people who, who use that opportunity just to cause mischief like petty criminals and things like that and we haven't even seen that in ottawa like the, the, there's maybe one or two events that happen i saw that there was something about um some kind of person an arsonist a potential arsonist and then of course there was people who had these nazi flags you know but you had trudeau's personal photographer who somehow managed to capture you know this one bad guy with like some kind of like racist insignia out of pools of tens of thousands of people of crowds. Like I couldn't even find my friends when I was there because there were so many people, but yet Trudeau's personal photographer happened to be right there in close up view of the bad guys, you know? So there's clearly a massive spin being put on this. And this is also fueling the fear of the people in Ottawa who sit there and listen to CTV and listen to CBC and they are part of that kind of like click. And so they're just thinking, oh my gosh, these people are crazy. They're coming in here and causing all this terror when it's really working class, regular people. Before we get to the rest of this video, this is just a short clip that has basically been sanitized so it can fly under the radar on YouTube. If you want to see the entire conversation that we had or the entirety of the commentary that you're watching, please go to one of my other platforms. One of the best places to go is allisonmorrow.locals.com where you can become part of my editorial board and pose questions ahead of time for interviews. I also do live editorial board meetings on Saturdays. You can bring your feedback and pose ideas for guests and topics for the week to come. And you get exclusive content so go to alisonmorrow.locals.com. But whatever you do, don't stay here on YouTube. If you want the full truth about what's happening around us, you gotta go somewhere else. So let's talk about that messaging that you just referenced and the news ownership in Canada. So this was live streamed by Global News. So there was no editing at that point when we were watching. Yeah. But uh, what what is it like news-wise in Canada uh, ownership, bias, uh, you know, maybe generally speaking, but uh, what you've seen specifically related to the, the truck convoy. Okay. Well, um, specifically to the truck convoy would be the same as the news that we've seen covered by uh, on, the, on the COVID topic throughout the last two years, um, is that the media is owned and a conservative figure would be 90% by the federal government. Global News is owned by them, CTV, CBC is the official government spokesperson, um, but all of the other ones have been paid billions of dollars. There's literally a clip of Justin Trudeau saying a couple of years ago, like, of course, the media will say what you want them to say when you pay them this well. And so over his uh, leadership as Canadian's prime minister, he's just gone and purchased more and more and more media. And so what you have there is something that's really similar to um, countries that are closed off from uh, the rest of, of, of free media. And, and, you know, something like maybe if you look at China or if you look at the USSR historically, really these propaganda style uh, media organizations who only report with one angle, who do not criticize anything that uh, any government or elected official or public health official does. And, uh, they, they spin everything. If you have parked your truck somewhere in protest and you're not driving, you can pass the time by going to allisonwinepromo.com. Again, this is if you have already parked your vehicle and you are not drinking and driving, go to allisonwinepromo.com. You get 50% off of my favorite Malbecs from Argentina. Some are from very high altitudes, one from almost 9,000 feet, another from the oldest vineyard in Argentina. So 50% off the wine itself and 50% off shipping. These are very robust Malbecs and they're different from the last pairings. If you got the last shipment again, Allison with one L wine promo.com, but 
maybe you're waking up somewhere in your truck and you're deciding, I don't know what I'm going to do today to protest COVID mandates. So in order to get some energy, I want to go to TwinEngineCoffee.com slash Allison, TwinEngineCoffee.com slash Allison. These are high altitude USDA certified organic roasts from Nicaragua. The CEO and owner and uh, founder of the company actually lives there with his family where they grow, harvest, and roast the beans. There is a wide variety of roasts. I am a dark roast drinker, but I also really like the Katura tea they have. This is tea that you make from coffee fruits. I cold brew mine for 24 hours. It is fantastic. So whatever you're driving, once you're parked in a safe spot and you want to check out my sponsors, don't forget, allisonwinepromo.com, twininginecoffee.com slash allison, and toast to free speech wherever you are.